I'm calling this uh, South Side of Chicago Day. We talked to David Reynolds a little bit earlier. South just, Side. South Side. Another South Sider, Emily Cavanaugh, District 230 Legacy Hall alumnus. You know her best as a songwriter. She's an independent artist, now based in New York. Uh, she's performed all over the world. Uh, singer, songwriter, a little bit of everything. Joins us now. How you doing, Emily? Hi, good morning. Hi, thanks for being with us. How you been? Oh my God, thanks for having me. And I apologize for my morning voice. I woke up extra early so I could do my warm up and I, I sound like I've been smoking cigarettes for two weeks. I think it's just <laughs> hey, allergies. And that's okay. That. It's more common than drinking, right? Now, right, <laughs> right. Now? Yeah, right. I just learned that. <laughs> Did you hear that? I just that. So that's yeah. okay. Uh, how have you been? How's everything? I know you're I'm dealing good. with a lot of stuff with your family. Yeah, I'm good. You know, um, it was really nice to be home with uh, with our fam for Mother's Day and to be with my mama, who sends her love to you. I know you guys had a chance to meet at the uh, Legacy Night, and it was really nice that the two of you connected. You were it's recently like, inducted into the District 230 Legacy Hall of Fame. That's where I met your mom, and she is just absolutely wonderful, and I would say your biggest fan. Uh, but, Aww. you know, tell us a little bit about, you've had great, congratulations, first of all, on Thank all of you. your success, you know, and everything that's gone on for you, Grammy nominated. We're going to talk about a song for you, your initiative uh, that you started over COVID as well, which is still going strong. But um, tell, for those who don't know, a little bit about your family, your background. You come from yeah. a big Irish family in Chicago South Side. Yeah, and I know you you know what that's like growing up in a big Greek family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> the Greeks and the <laughs> Irish get along well. Um, yeah, I grew up in the South Side of Chicago, you know, big family, uh, 57 first cousins. I think 47 are still living in Chicago. I mean, we're a really close bunch. Everybody gathered together at Christmas and fit into one pizza parlor to all be together, you know, um, uh, just a really tight crew. My siblings are my best buddies, you know, my mom and dad, very inspiring in my career. My dad is like a great storyteller and just like the funniest person in the room. And I think he was sort of the first person to introduce me to my love of language and to the, the love of writing. Um, and, you know, loved a good radio, loved, we used to listen to Dick Biondi and the oldies and Ray Charles and Nat King Cole, Roy Orbison. And, you know, and then mom was um, a teacher and just really instilled a lot about like compassion and empathy. And I think in all of us, you know, and, um, and she was just a lot of fun. And, you know, we grew up listening to Carol King and Joni Mitchell and they just, my early days in Chicago were so inspiring and impactful on what I do with my, with my life now. Um, that I'm constantly reminded of that as as I get a little a little older, <laughs> yeah. And look back with you know with with a ton of gratitude. Um, and then you know, Stag, I I was very lucky. I I I know not a lot of people say this, but I loved high school. You know, I I met some of my very best friends there. Um, I sort of found my voice there. I, I realized that while I loved being on the basketball team, I was never going to really play on the basketball team. So my role was to like sing the national anthem before the games at the basketball games. And I think just early days, I started to recognize that there might be a path for me in the arts. Um, went on to school in the Midwest and studied at Webster University in St. Louis and then got my master's at NYU and have been in New York City ever since. Um, but I go back to Chicago pretty regularly because I feel like it's still my my home away from home your classmates have have described you as literally the wind beneath so many people's wings and i don't mean that in a cheesy way but you're so philanthropic you're not just a, a famous singer songwriter but you have performed and written for refugee communities individuals facing homelessness seniors with memory loss and you did something remarkable during COVID-19, when we were all locked down and, you know, working from home, you launched a music initiative called A Song For You. So tell everybody what this is. So the idea there was, you know, as a singer-songwriter, you know, the world, the venues had gone dark, right? As somebody who made a living as a musician, um, as well as like all of my friends, so the work that they were doing, you know, the venues had gone dark, the world had kind of gone dark. And so there was this what could we do in some small way to give back to people in this, in this crazy time? Um, and I actually spent the first three months of the pandemic in Chicago. So this, I, the idea of this was born in my hometown, you know, sitting, um, watching the news with my mom and, and realizing that there just, there was all this, you know, watching the stories of people who were in rooms where their families couldn't be was just like so hard to see, I think for all of us, you know, and, 
as a singer songwriter, you're met with this moment of like, well, what can I do in a global pandemic? Like what kind of skill sets do I have to, to help with this? And honestly, the answer was not much of one, but I could, I could write a song, you know, and I had a lot of friends who could do the same. So I started cold calling hospices and hospitals and, you know, do you need a song? You know, do any of your nurses need songs? Do any of your patients need songs? And to be honest, at first, the response was like, we need like PPE. <laughs> we need, we need workers. We need staff. I don't know that we need a song, but within a few weeks time, people just started calling back nurses, doctors, chaplains, volunteer coordinators, and just saying, you know, actually we have a nurse in isolation and we could use a song. You know, we have a, a kid who's not going to get to go home and we have a chaplain who's got a grant to bring iPads onto the unit. We could use a song, you know, and what started as like, let's just write a couple songs or even send a couple songs grew to writing for a hundred nurses at Christmas to say, thank you. Uh, writing for 15,000 nurses two Christmases ago to say, thank you, you know, to really say thank you to the first responders and the people doing the real work on the front lines. Um, and grew to writing over 200 personalized songs from scratch based on the stories of the patients in the room um, where their families couldn't be. And so the response has just been so generous, like way, way too kind. Um, and what began as just something to do in the pandemic grew into its own charity. And we now write for folks in hospice and hospital uh, at the end of life. I think it's absolutely incredible. How about these numbers? In just three years, not even three years, you've written close to 200, almost 300 songs for That's patients right. in hospitals and hospices. That's what a feat. Do you ever look back and think, wow, I can't believe I've done this? Well, I'll be honest. I mean, we used to sit and just watch Shit's Creek and you know, drink wine. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> yeah. I didn't think much was going to come of my time in the pandemic. And so the fact that this was this tiny little thing that, you know, to be honest, still is tiny, but grew into something that was a larger movement, I think, in the artist community. You know, friends chimed in and people who are way more talented than I am, you know, friends who've won Grammys and been nominated for Grammys and friends abroad and here and, you know, in New York, Chicago, um, all said yes. Like that was what was so inspiring was in such a crazy time in the world. Everybody said yes. Like, yes, I will send a song. Yes, I will uh, help with this. Yes, you know, I'm a nurse and I will share this with the rest of our nurses. Like, and a shout out to all the social workers. I mean, the social workers were working 24 hours, like on, you know, all the time, like single moms doing this job. And, and they all said, yes, like everybody just was so kind. And I think to see that was really, um, it kind of made me want to keep going, you know. Your mission is remarkable. Here is a song for you. org, your foundation and your charity now, and you're still writing and recording songs for patients and families, primarily in hospice as a way to bring them a little bit of peace and joy uh, toward That's the end right. of their life. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and if people want to get involved, you know, we're, like you said, exactly, here's a song for you.org. You know, you can reach out at a song for you songs at Gmail, um, follow us on Insta. I'm on Spotify. It's just Emily Cavanaugh. And we're hoping to record this year to make our first record of some of these songs that we've written, you know, because we've, we've wanted to honor the legacy of people with these songs. And, and, you know, folks are able to keep them long after they're gone. They're able to keep the lyrics. They're able to keep the song and play the song on their playlists and, and really keep alive the memory of this person that they love, you know? Um, but we also know that like, we want to be able to share some of this work with people, but we want to do it in a way that's like tasteful and tactful. And so a little bit, we've kept some of these songs to ourselves through the years because we haven't wanted to just broadcast this to the world. Um, but we've had a few families recently say like, please do like, we want this story told. Like this is the story of, you know, a 35 year old who like otherwise, people aren't going to get to know about his amazing life or this is the story of my mom or this is the story of this person or this is the story of you know to each person I think it's been different but the collective feeling is you know somebody said it really well we had a, a girl reach out with a request for her dad and she's like I just want the idea to be I'll go on singing um even after you're gone you know and so the idea is like we really want to keep alive people's memory um through this tiny little this tiny little project. It brings to a tiny little project that is just so successful and wonderful, all because of you. Emily, oh, please, oh. you know, c congratulations on your success and please come back. Come visit us when you're in studio next time and will you play for us? Yeah, I would okay, love that. Okay, good, good. I would love that. And Andrea, if you can let your listeners know, we're looking now, because I know you had asked, like we're looking for people who want to get involved in like kind of the, the side of the uh, work that I'm not as great at, like the more businessy, you know, the sitting on a board or fundraising and development or corporate philanthropy, you know, if there's 
if there's radio stations out there or there's labels or there's, you know, songwriting companies or publishing companies or who just have interest in supporting a project like this, like that's kind of what we're, we're in that moment now where our demand for songs has grown past our resources. And we are looking to people to say like, Oh, I know how to keep that going. And you know, the sustainability factor. Um, so please do feel free to, to reach out. If and you're listening. Please do. This is a great group and a great foundation to hop on board with. Here is a song for you.org. Emily Cavanaugh, follow her on her social sites as well. And again, you're wonderful. Uh, uh, please, so are you. please I'm so happy to meet you. Oh, <laughs> you as well. Please stay in touch. And my best to your mom and your family you. and everybody on the South Side. So proud of you. Thank you. Big hugs to you, Andrea. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Emily. Be safe and we'll okay. talk to you very soon. That's Emily Cavanaugh again. Here is a song for you.org.